Welcome back everyone. Time for the Law of Sines Part 2. We've already taken a look at angle side angle and angle angle side. The two that are a little bit easier when we try to do the Law of Sines because there's only one possible answer for each. Now we're going to take a look at the type of case that's a little bit more difficult. We could have zero, one, or two possible solutions. It's called the ambiguous case and it's side side angle. All right, our first example is going to be an example of a problem where no triangle is possible with the combination of sides and the angle that's going to be given to us. So here we have A is 4, B is 7, angle A is 65. And we put that into our little diagram above. That way we can keep track of what's going on. Now it's very clear to see which law of sines we're going to end up using. We have both angle A and side A, and we also have a side B. We don't have anything for C at all. So we're going to use sine of A over A equals sine of angle B over B. And we're going to fill things in from there. So the sine of 65 degrees over 4 is equal to the sine of B over 7. And when we solve this with a cross product, we end up with 4 sine of B is equal to 7 sine of 65 degrees. Sine of B then would be 7 sine of 65 degrees over 4, and then we would use the inverse sign in order to find B. So here is the inverse sign of 7 sine of 65 degrees over 4. Now I'm going to put this into my calculator and see what I get. Uh, error? Let's try that again. got to be something wrong with the calculator. It keeps telling me error. I'm doing it right. Inverse sine 7, sine 65. And error again. I must have a problem with my calculator. Or maybe it just doesn't work. And that's because there is no possible triangle. This is the exact spot you're going to have a problem and where your calculator will be unable to find an answer for this inverse. When this happens, no triangle is possible, and we're done with this problem. Our second example is going to have only one triangle as a possibility, just like the other things that we had done going into this. Angle, side, angle, 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 side, all resulted in having only one triangle. The problem is there's a possibility we could have two. And because of that, we also have to check for that. So that will be part of our solution in solving for this one triangle. I took the liberty of changing our previous example just by one number. I made this a 9 instead of what it was before. So now, when we put this together exactly the same way, we still have the sine of A over A equals the sine of B over B. And we fill in those numbers. Just showing the calculations that we would use to get down to finding angle B, we're using the inverse of the sine of 7, sine of 65 degrees divided by 9. Quickly grabbing the calculator, we have a little bit different situation this time. This answer actually comes out as approximately 44.82 degrees. At this point, it would seem this is going to be our one and only answer, and it may be but we actually have to check something else first. I'm going to introduce a new term to you, one that I coined, the obtuse supplement. And this is a time we have to look for this value. The obtuse supplement is the obtuse angle that is supplemental to the angle that we just found. So we just found an angle of 44.82. We know that angle is going to make a triangle with the other information that we've been given so far. But there's a possibility that the obtuse supplement could make a triangle also. And that's because this angle and the obtuse supplement actually have the same exact value for the sine. So when we're looking for the value of sine for the inverse sine of this, there are two different angles that have that value. And because of that, we have to check to see if the other one could possibly be an answer. So we take 180 
and we subtract 44.82. And when we divide and when we subtract that out, we get 135.18 degrees. Now, in order for this angle to be able to make a triangle with what we have, we have to put it along with angle A, the one we already have and then we were given, and see if it's going to be less than 180 degrees. If it is, we still have room for this angle to be part of a triangle. Well, let's do that. 135.18 plus 65 degrees. And very clearly, this is not going to work. We already have 200 0.18 degrees. That's greater than 180 degrees. There's not going to be another triangle here. So what we know is that there is just one triangle in this situation. So now that we've figured out there's only one triangle, the next thing to do is we put our angle 44.82 degrees up here. So now we have angle C and side C left to find. The easiest to find here would be the remaining angle. We use triangle angle sum theorem as we've done so many times. So the two angles we know are 65, 44.82, we subtract them from 180 and we get 70.18 degrees. And that's going to be our final angle. So we put that up here, we're almost done with this problem, we just have one thing left to do, and that's to find side C. Side C, we're going to go right back to the law of sines again. Now, we are going to use the exact same given values for the law of sines. We don't want to use B because angle B is an approximation. If we have angle A and side A, which are exact, available to us, we'll use that instead. And then we're going to set this stuff equal to sine of C over C. So this is going to be the sine of 65 degrees over 9 is equal to the sine of 70.18 over C. So quickly we do the calculations, and we find that C is going to be equal to 9 sine of 70.18 degrees divided by the sine of 65 degrees. Some quick calculations give us a final answer of 9.34 for side C. So finally we'll come over here and add this into our mix, that C is now 9.34. And now it's time to do our common sense check. So our smallest angle is angle B. Our smallest side is side B. That checks. Our largest angle, not by much, is angle C. And our largest side, not by much, is side C. But it still works. And then, of course, 7 plus 9 is more than 9.34. It looks like we've made the right choice, and we have the correct answer. Our final example is going to be the example where we have two possible triangles. This is probably the most difficult one because we have to actually check for two triangles, realize that there are, and then we have a few extra calculations to do. But still, we're following the same procedure that we just did for our last example when there was just one triangle. What you'll notice is a new example. I didn't want you to think that every single time we're going to use sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. So we now have C. 5, B is 8, Angle C is 25 degrees. So we're going to pick the appropriate law of sines. And that's going to be the sine of C over C, because we have both of those values, equals the sine of B over B. You know how to do all these calculations at this point. We've been doing these same calculations with the other law of science problems so far. And we get down to angle B being equal to approximately 42.55 degrees. But as we looked at the last time, we have something else we need to do. We know 42.55 is going to work. But now we have to check if there's a second triangle. Does the obtuse supplement work as another possible angle? So we're going to take 42.55 and we're going to subtract it from 180 degrees. This angle will be our obtuse supplement. And that angle is going to be 137.45 degrees. Now we need to check to see if this is going to make another triangle with what we already have. And what we have right now is we have 25 degrees plus 137.45. So if the obtuse supplement is going to be an angle that works, 
These are the two angles we would have so far in our triangle. If we add this together, we end up with a value of 162.45 degrees. That's definitely going to be less than 180 degrees. Because of that, we know that we have two possible triangles for this situation. One that's going to be made with the acute angle that we found, 42.55 for B, and one that's going to be made with the obtuse angle for B. That's 137.45. So when we go back to our answer blank up here, what we want to do is we want to put both of these answers in because both of them could be possible. I want to make sure that the first one I give is my acute angle, and then my second one that I give is my obtuse angle. And we will build everything else around this situation. The next step in our process is going to be finding both third angles we're missing. Because now we have two different triangles. One's going to be made up of 25 degrees and 42.55 degrees. So when we subtract that from 180, we are left with 112.45 degrees. That will be the first angle that we would write down. The second angle we're going to write down is what we get with the second triangle, where we already have 25 degrees and 137.45 degrees. When we subtract that from 180, we get 17.55 degrees. Now let's add those to our list of different things we have for this triangle. The last thing we need to do is we need to find both of the third sides that we are going to have for this triangle because we have all of the other parts. And as you can see, we have two different law of signs that we have to set up. One that's going to use angle A, our first triangle, and that will give us a side A of our first triangle. One that's going to use angle A of our second triangle, which will give us our side A of the second triangle. And notice in both cases, we are going to use the law of signs that gives us our exact values. So angle C is given to us, side C is given to us, that's the law of signs that we're going to use to help us. We do the calculations for the first side, and what we find is that side A is approximately 10.93. And in the same way, we're going to do the calculations for A sub 2, and in going through those looking very similar to our solving for A sub 1, we end up with a value of 3.57. Now it's time to put those back into our mix with everything else that we've found so far. All right, now this is where it's very important to be organized because we're going to do our common sense check, but now we're doing this with two separate triangles. So I want to have you look at the first numbers for each one of these. We have a 5 and 8, and for A, we have 10.93. Over here we have 25, we have 42.55, we have 112.45. That's why it's important to make sure that you're putting these in the correct order. Those are the angles and sides that go together in triangle number one. So in that triangle, 5 is the smallest side out of all of those, and 25 is the smallest angle. So this does check out. 10.93 is the largest side in that triangle just like 112.45 is the largest angle. That checks out. And 5 plus 8 is more than 10.93. Good chance we've gotten triangle number 1 correct. Now we're going to take a look at triangle number 2. Triangle number 2 is made up of 5, 8, and 3.57. 25, 137.45, and 17.55. Our largest side this time is side B, with 8. The largest angle is 137.45. Check. Our smallest side is side A. Previously it was our largest side, but now with the second triangle it's the smallest side at 3.57. Our smallest angle is 17.55 in this second triangle. Check. And 3.57 plus 5 is a little bit more than 8, so that checks as well. 
This is the work that you're going to have to do when you have two triangles, the ambiguous case. But as long as you have good organization and keep things straight, you'll be able to get the job done.